Hey guys, Jeff the Nature Guy here at Zoo Montana. Beautiful day out here. Spring is here, and that means baby bird season. You know, I talk about it every year, and I'm going to talk a little bit about baby birds and if you find one. But first, let's talk about what birds build to hold those babies nests. And if you look around, especially right now, this is the best time to go out and look for cool bird nests up in the trees because there's no leaves to hide them yet, but the birds have to build them to get ready for the season when babies are born. So let me talk about how to identify some nests. Now, here in Montana, We've got so many different kinds of birds and so many different kinds of nests from the tiny to the giant In fact, we've got some really big ones here in Montana We'll mention that in just a second But one of my favorites is this one that I'm holding right here And this is probably one of the more common nests you are gonna see here in the state of Montana And the first thing you're gonna probably notice is all that grass But then inside it's actually lined with mud and that is a telltale sign that you're looking at a robin's nest They love to use mud. They're great architects meaning they use that mud to hold the this together. This thing is actually a couple years old, fell out of a tree a couple years ago, and you can still see that it's intact because these things are built very, very well. So robin's nest. But my favorite thing about birds is most birds are very resourceful. What that means is they will literally find anything they can to add to their nest, and case in point is this cool nest right here. Now you may notice that that kind of looks like hair. Well, you're exactly right. This was actually found in our barn here at the zoo, and get this. That's actually a nest made out of goat hair. Of all things, probably sparrows, they found that hair, they decided to weave a nest and build a nest out of the hair. Talk about resourceful and what we call opportunistic, meaning they're gonna use whatever they find. Now, follow me, I'm gonna go down here for just a minute, because I talked about some big nests and some small nests. Let's talk about the tiny ones. Look at that, anybody know what that is? A hummingbird nest. Oh, it's so cool. Look how little. Imagine how small those birds must be to be able to sit in there with probably two or three eggs and the babies. That is the coolest thing I've ever seen. So that would be a hummingbird. And then you go to the big boys like this one right here. This is actually what we call a, a replica, meaning it's not a real nest, but this is exactly what an osprey nest would look like. Now the problem with ospreys is that they're called pack rats, which means they will use almost anything they can find in their nest, and that means they'll use weird stuff like fire hoses. Uh, there's uh, some ribbons in here, and one of the biggest problems is they use baling twine, the stuff that wraps up hay bales, and the problem is that stuff gets in their nest, the babies get stuck in it, and sometimes it can kill them. So we're trying to do a lot to get baling twine off of the farms, cleaning it up and recycling it. That way it doesn't end up in the osprey nest. And last but not least, the biggest here in Montana, bald eagle nest, remember 10 feet wide, 20 feet deep, can weigh several tons. Tell you what, these birds are spectacular. And by the way, if you find a baby bird, if it's naked, Get it, put it back in the nest. It's okay if you touch it. If it's got feathers on it, leave it alone. It's going to be okay. Guys, until next time, I'm Jeff the Nature Guy here at Zoo Montana.